Well, hey there everyone, Kay here on my homestead. How are you? <laughs> I'm finally outside for a couple of videos, a uh, break in the, in the rain. My onions are already, I got them a little waterlogged, so I think I'm just gonna wait until the uh, sunny stretch, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and hope for the best. But what I can do right now is I can finally plant some direct sow cool season vegetables. Some of these are frost tolerant, so in case we get some more frost, no problem. All the beets and lettuce and chard, and I'm sure radishes are too, are all frost tolerant. So that's what I'm gonna put in this bed behind me right here. It's been prepared for a while. This tree, I took some pictures when it was really pretty. I'll see if I can pop a picture in. It was so pretty when it first budded out and now it looks kind of not exciting. <laughs> so as if I don't have enough seeds, and I do, I have uh, so many seeds, but I, I was at the store, I was at Sprouts, many, Many stores have the turnstile, the, the display that turns uh, with the botanical interest seeds in it. And I am an affiliate, so be sure and grab my link if you want to order anything from botanical interest. Great company and a huge selection. So I saw this, remembering from my childhood, the one thing I remember I didn't really care for was turnips. But this the description made me made me feel like I wanted to try them. Uh, this says, not your grandma's turnips. These crunchy roots have a sweet, mild, whoops, mild radish flavor and are especially suited for eating fresh at baby size, like an apple. That's called the Market Express turnip. So I wanted to try that. And gourmet blend of beets. I do love beets. And I do use the beet tops in my southern braised greens. And I have a video for that, and I'll put it right up there. So good. And more beets. These are the Golden Boy. Beautiful. And Chiagia beet, which are the stripy ones. The whole inside is like a stripe. Gourmet mescaline baby greens. I love baby greens. I love lettuce. And Ford Hook chard. This is Ford Hook Giant. So I think what I'll do is plant that in the middle because that'll be the tallest. I had great luck. It wasn't this brand of seed. It was a different one, but I had great look, luck with the Ford Hook before. It just seemed to be the most tolerant, or let's see, it got the least amount of pests and it just, it stayed looking good longer. I have a lot of carrot seeds inside and I know there's a lot of different ways to grow carrots for success. I'm not necessarily going to do that here because I need to get some seeds in the ground. I do wanna try another method and I'll be doing that in a, a different video. So I'm gonna make crosswise rows on the further end of the raised bed and <laughs> I have too many seeds for this one thing, but I can do some repeat sowing in a different bed. And I just wanna get a few of each one of these things in the ground, so stay with me. <laughs> best we can do with one bed. Hey, down. 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 Thank you. Okay. I'm going to get my fertilizer, lay this out, and we're going to drop in some seeds. If I had planted these the day we got the bed prepared, no problem. That didn't happen. 
because we had all these frosts. And so in the meantime, the rain has beaten down the dirt, the soil, and there's almost like a crust on top. In addition, approximately 1 million maple seeds have fallen on here. So I will have to be vigilant in pulling those out. Uh, they come up and then they have two little leaves and yeah, I've, I've pulled a lot of them out. So I'm just going to try to break it up a little bit. It's extremely wet. And I don't know a better way to do this than with my hands. I'm just breaking up the crust. Ooh, that's wet. The goal here is just to fluff it up. And wind up with something le somewhat level. Now it is going to rain tomorrow, so I'm going to cover these with frost blankets so they just don't get completely beaten down. It would be great to have tall raised beds on a flat surface because that height over there is just perfect for me. This is just a little trick I use to protect my knees just leaning against the bed. This is actually very good exercise for your upper arms. Gardening is great exercise in general. But most of us have been sitting around, at least I have. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of sitting around during the winter, sitting cozy by the fire. Oh, this is gonna work so much better. It's worth the effort. We tried using the blower, the leaf blower, <laughs> to get these maple seedlings off, but they didn't, they didn't budge. If you're beginning gardening, most seed packets will tell you how many days to maturity, how uh, the sun requirements, and you know, days to harvest, in other words, how to plant soil depth. Botanical interest is particularly good at that. And what information you don't see on the outside, you can open up the, the packet and the entire inner side, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but the entire inner side of the packet is loaded with information. Okay, we've almost got this. If you're new to my channel, these raised beds were rebuilt just before Christmas. All but one. I need to find somebody new to come back and finish up. Ooh, look at this. Any of these kinds of things are decomposers, but this is not an earthworm. <laughs> this is going to turn into, uh, I forget which one this one is, but ooh, it's strong. Probably look better just to go straight rows, 12 inches. I'm assuming. Let's see if the, uh, the lettuce doesn't need 12 inches, though. You can sow these every three weeks until two weeks before your average first fall frost dates. And transplanting is not recommended, so it's better just to, to sow them outside. Broadcast a half an inch apart. All righty. I find that I'm jealous of the gardeners who can plan everything out and everything is beautiful and laid out and and if you look at it from a drone shot it just looks like it's perfection. I've never achieved perfection. <laughs> I mean first of all these seeds are tiny and how do you get them a half an inch apart? You know? because this is pretty coarse, 
this mix, I'm just going to press these in. So let's see what it says about the turnips. What? Row spacing is 18 inches. Wow. Really? 18 inches? <laughs> Technically, you want 18 on each side. That's ridiculous. I can't, can't do that. I don't have that much space. So I'm going to put these right down the middle of here. Seed depth is a quarter of an inch. So we're going to get, I tell you what, we'll give it a foot on either side. How's that? Okay with you guys and gals. These seeds look exactly like cabbage seeds, tiny, round, and gray. Three seeds every six inches. Okay. I'm not taking the time to count. I'm doing a very small pinch and hope it's three. I mean, all this stuff is approximate. How can you know exactly if that's a quarter of an inch, you know? them off. Okay, let's see what beats. Row spacing, 12 inches. Well, that would put us about here. And this is half an inch down. So, you know what? I'm going to have to pull a eyeballing this one. Now that's deeper than a half an inch, but when I close it up, I'm not going to put that much on top. And charcoal. That was already done. This is a slow release organic fertilizer. That's there. <laughs> Once again, the seeds are on that side. If you've never grown beets, they're, they're like in a cluster. They're like, unlike other seeds, these are little, whoops, little clusters. And these are half an inch one seed every four inch. I think that's why, because they're clusters. Now yeah, the gloves are on that side get more than half an inch on there. I am an affiliate for Ivy Organics All-Purpose Fertilizer. The macronutrients plants need, and you can do it on every, it, it's good for everything. All organic, made in the USA, family-owned business. Can't say enough good stuff about these guys. Great tasting, planting depth a half an inch, 
Maybe I don't have to plant it in a row. Okay, I haven't taken this off in months, and so I'm going to use this on top of what I just planted. <laughs> there are coils under here, the copper coils, and let's see what we've got. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Wow, 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 oh wow, oh wow, crumpled onions, <laughs> oh they're crumpled, and they're putting up some kind of a top, what is that, wild, okay we got some weeds in here for sure, what do you think? You guys haven't seen this in a long time. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the celery. I'll put the, the link right up at the top. This is the celery that I transplanted from the bed that was getting rebuilt. I put several pieces in here. I think there were three. I've got a weed over here. Uh, we're going to identify that. And this is purple dead nettle. And let's see what else we got here. That may be all that's in there. But this is comfrey. Beautiful leaves of comfrey coming back. Over here as well. This looks like chickweed. We've got onions, but you know, because the cloth was pressing down, they needed a, you know, support. Oh, this is wild lettuce. It was here before. I just didn't want to get rid of it. Because, you know, we're, and this is uh, dandelion. I'm going to be doing a dandelion video. This is my, uh, <laughs> what's it called? Coming up, the shoots, you can eat them. Uh, ha, 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 it starts with an H. I've got coils in here, and there's coils in here, and I wonder if that really helped. I mean, that's some beautiful celery. Okay, well, that was a surprise, pleasant surprise. These were onions that I just, I cut and replanted, and they're, they're so unusual. I don't recognize this on the top. What is that? <laughs> The mystery onion. It's still a little tiny bit cool, so, you know, you got the drippy nose. <laughs> hey everybody, thanks so much for following my channel and supporting it. You know, if you're buying products, I know not everybody has the funds, but if you are buying products, I hope you will check my list below and see if there's anything that you need. And I'm a real necessity buyer, so I totally get it. But if there's anything you need, and it's garden boots or seeds, any kind of plant care products, grow lights, uh, what else do I have? Well, the Amazon link, you can buy anything if you're still using Amazon. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. I am going to be doing, next I'm going to be doing the, uh, we're gonna take a walk around. It's gonna be like a mystery tour. And I'm gonna show you what has already popped up, medicinal plants that have already, that have already popped up. 
and there are a lot. So that'll be fun, won't it? <laughs> and there's so much more to plant. I've got to plant onions and I don't know if you'll get to see it all. I've got to get this stuff done. But here we are, March 8th, no, March 7th, March 7th, and I feel good. Finally got something done. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Leave a comment if you have any questions, or check out those uh, hot links, the, uh, the little white cards above. Go to specific videos that I thought, I think you might that I've, <laughs> that I think you might enjoy as per what I'm talking about, how it relates to what I'm talking about. So if you're not accustomed to using those links, you just click on it, save your place in the video, click on it, watch it, come back, and, uh, and my channel benefits and so do you. So God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss an episode right here on the homestead. God bless and I'll see you next time.